Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to my channel. So on the 20th of July, the Army put out their Armed Forces Pay Review Body findings. And the key points generally are, is that the AFPRB recommended a 3.75% pay rise for the soldiers. And the government has accepted that. So that's great. So when you're in the army now and whatever you do, whatever job you're in, you're going to get a 3.75% pay rise. However, alongside that, obviously, other things are going to increase in price as well. There might be a 1% increase in accommodation or food or a, a plethora of things really that can negate that 3.75% pay rise that we are getting. So what I'm going to do is quickly go through the Armed Forces Pay Review Body document now, see what we're going to get increases, see what things have actually been frozen, and actually have a look at if we are, as a soldier, really better off or not. So we've got 3.75%, which I think during my career, that's probably the highest that I've ever seen as part of a yearly increase. I've spent a number of years, I think we went around four years at one point, with our pay actually being frozen year on year. So this, this 3.84% pay rise is pretty decent. But then you have a look at things like teachers and nurses who have got a 5% increase and you start thinking, is it actually that good, the increase that we have had? So let's just go through the document now. So we've got our increase and we'll have a look at accommodation charges now. So accommodation charge increases have been capped at a maximum of 1%. So they're going to go up by 1%, which was a deliberate decision um, by the Defence Secretary to mitigate some of the rises in the cost of living. Uh, grade 2 and Grade 3 will see an increase of 0.6% and 0.33%. So Grade 2, 0.66, Grade 3, 0.33. And for those in Grade 4, single living accommodation, there's no increase. Okay, that's not actually too bad. So I, I've seen increases of around 2% in the past. So daily food charges. Increases to daily food charges have been frozen. So if you're on pay as you dine, you shouldn't see an increase in what you are paying with regards to pay as you dine. So that's actually pretty good. Um, then we'll have a look at impact. The cap on increase to charges will result in a very small increase for many personnel in service accommodation and using military catering facilities. So all in all, 1%. And we've got our 3.75% increase. So you could see approximately anything up to if you're in a level four single living accommodation, you're only gonna you're not gonna see anything. You're gonna get that full three point seven five percent. If you're in other accommodation, you you might see yourself only getting two point seven five percent. But that's not too bad at all. Let's have a look at what else has been increased. So national insurance contributions. In April 22, the government increased national insurance contributions by 1.25% as a health and social care levy. Yeah, okay, remember that. To offset this increase in contributions, the government also increased the uh, national insurance threshold, the point at which you actually start paying national insurance. So, what does that mean for us as a soldier? A private soldier with three years service on £22,286 can actually expect to see a reduction in national insurance contributions charges over the year of £150. Which means because of the threshold that have increased, so instead of paying national insurance on £9,980, you start paying it on £12,570 now. These soldiers, these privates with three years service are actually going to make another or an additional £150 on top of their wages, which is pretty decent. 
Uh, contribution in lieu of council tax. So I do get questions on this, on what is Silox or some people, if you're living in um, so family accommodation, married quarters, you will have Silox charges. That's a um, contribution in lieu of council tax. We don't pay council tax in the, in the army direct to the council. The army take it out of our pay and then pay it to the council. So there's a um, 150 pound reduction to Silock will which will be applied to service of family um, accommodation. So this will come in your pay. So this month, if you've been in married quarters for a couple of months or more, you will get an extra 150 pounds in your pay. Decent. Energy rebate. Occupants of SFA who pay for their own energy supplies will receive the same energy re rebate payments as civilian counterparts. So uh, the government did announce a couple of months ago that they're giving money because of electricity and gas supplies are so expensive now and the rates are so expensive that guys, people living in their own houses, they're going to get a rebate straight into their electricity or their energy suppliers account and the army are going to do exactly well not the army are going to do exactly the same but we will get the same it'll make no odds that we're actually in service family accommodation because we pay energy prices the same uh, we just don't pay water and our council tax is taken out a little differently now there are there was one other that I noticed. Uh, yeah, so get you home. Those who use get you home or home to duty. So get you home travel. So if you have your own property that you live in and you live on camp during the week and you have your own property that you go back to on weekends, that's going to see increases of 7%. So say you get 40p a mile at the moment, you're going to get a 7% increase per mile on that. So that's pretty good as well. So that really does help with fuel prices for sure. So let's have a look at what this actually means. And I'll put this up on the um, screen now. So what we have is a private initial trained soldier um, living in um, single living accommodation and because of the 3.75% he will get a daily pay increase of £2.21. He is in a grade two single living accommodation so the accommodation increase of a penny per day. Uh, daily net increase is £2.20 with an overall of £65.91 and so before taxes in total is over annual increase is going to be £800. So if you are a private and you've served two or three years you're going to make an extra £800 a year. And then you can go down and, and I'll leave this for a little while longer when, when the video ends. And you look at things like the corporal in the Royal Signals, who's been in um, a couple of years, and you can see he will get an increase of 1,236 per year. And you move down to an OF2, a captain, and he will see an increase of around 1,700 pounds a year. So if you ask me, that's not too bad at all. However, when you look at inflation and the rate of inflation, this is why things like teachers and nurses have, have, have pretty much hit the roof of their 5% when you see inflation is absolutely huge, 10%, 15% on some things. This really won't make up for it. We're not getting paid in line with inflation. However, what I will say is that you're pretty much guaranteed a job in the military and to be honest with you, 3.75 is pretty big as far as an annual pay increase. You will get, when you get promoted, you get other pay increases. You have to go up a minimum of 2%. And then I think within the army as well, if you go from corporal to sergeant, you have to go up a minimum of 5%. So essentially, you could see, you could jump up three or four times in a year with regards to annual pay rise, increment pay rise, and you get a promotion as well. So three times in one year, 
that's pretty big. You could, you could see yourself with, with a almost 10% pay increase within a year. So yeah, not too bad. If you do have any questions or comments though, please just put them in the comment sections below. I always get back to them all. Other than that, take care.